Hello everyone and welcome to another Starbase video! Now that you're familiar with the basics of what's needed in a spaceship from the spaceships video, we can look at a few more details of what to keep in mind when designing and building your own ship. The first thing you'll be building for your ship is the frame, so let's talk about that a bit more. The frame is a set of beams that keeps the ship together. It's also what defines the shape of your ship since it's what the hull plating and thrusters will be attached to. As you can see, you can create very different looking ships from the same set of beams. When you have thrusters on your frame, you can test its integrity with the durability tool, which shows how solidly each frame beam is connected to the thrusters. If the frame design is not balanced enough, certain sections may encounter too much stress during flight. What's more, if you want your ship to be able to perform all maneuvers, it needs some maneuver thrusters on its sides. For example, if there are no thrusters at the front of the ship, it won't be able to fly backwards. However, depending on the purpose of the ship, you might not need it to have maneuver thrusters on each side. The ship Hedron is a good example of a rather small ship with a lot of thrusters, which is what currently makes it the fastest ship in Starbase. Then there's the windows. If you want to build a ship for exploration, it's nice to have loads of windows. If it's meant for battle, then you might want to consider limiting the size and number of windows, as they are more fragile. However, there are also creative solutions for this problem. Here you can see the Empire Frigate's moving window shields that can shield the windows in battle but be opened when increased visibility is needed. Now that we know how to build a nice stable hull, we need to know what to keep in mind when placing things inside it. One thing that's good to take into consideration is the placement of the generator and the propellant tanks, as they are highly explosive. Ever wondered why Kingdom's fighter ships seem to explode in half quite easily in our battle videos? That's because the ship holds its propellant tanks in the middle of the ship. As another example, Kingdom's gunship called Lancer has propellant tanks in different areas of the ship, so if one of them explodes, the ship can still move. It's also good to make sure that the generator is in a guarded area, since if the generator explodes, not much will be left of your ship. But for maintenance purposes, it's important to have access to the generator for changing the fuel rod and such, so leave some room in front of it or have it be accessible via a hatch. For very small ships, you might be better off not having a generator at all, but using batteries like the ship called Vasama here. Next, let's talk about some of the other possible devices you might have in your ship. This is where your universal tool comes in handy. Most likely you will have doors, lights and other devices that you'll need buttons to control. If the button and the device are in the same device network, or in other words connected to the same power source, then this is as simple as changing the button state field of the button to the name of the device you wish to control. When cabling these electric devices in your ship, it's useful to double cable things so that if the cable gets destroyed at one spot, the whole ship won't lose power. Here's the Empire gunship Lictor's cabling as an example. As you can see, the cables from the generator go in different directions and if you shoot a cable, the lights still stay on. For devices that are on the outside of the ship like mounted weapons, cabling through the hull is made easy via the device spaces that have sockets in them and thus can provide power to any device attached to their surface. Then there's your command center. You can freely choose its layout using levers and buttons and assign each of them to control whatever you wish with your universal tool. Then you can set the keybinds of any of these buttons and levers to whatever you wish. Then there's YOLOL, the in-game programming language that can be used to add automated features to your ship. For example, you can use it to create different helpful displays for fuel, ammo, power and so on. You can also use it to create an eco mode for your ship that automatically limits the ship's fuel consumption. Another way to use YOLOL is to program your ship to be able to autopilot to your destination of choice using the transmitter and receiver system. Of course, there are also countless of other uses for it, many of which we might not have even thought of. Then you can also think of all the additional things and devices you want for your ship, 
like cargo transportation devices or mounted weapons, or whatever you may need for its purpose. You can let your creativity flow and make your own ship designs, or if you don't feel like building a ship from scratch, maybe buy one of the ready-made ships and modify it to your liking.